Hello, I Sasibhushan Tiwari welcome you. In today's session, we will take up a problem from fluid mechanics in which understanding the statement of the question well is of utmost importance. Understanding the key assumptions in the statement of the questions is very important. Let us have a look at today's question. Uh, the question says a long and thin bar with uniform square cross section floats horizontally in water. Density of water is given to be rho with its top surface parallel to the water surface. The top surface of the bar is parallel to the water surface means bar is horizontal. Exactly half the volume of the bar is submerged. Okay. A small block of mass m is placed on one end of the bar and as a result the bar sinks so that edge of the upper face on the block side is exactly at the same height as the water surface. While at the other end of the bar, the lower face does not rise above the water. What will be volume of the bar in terms of given quantities? And of course, only two quantities are given as such. One is mass of the block and the other is density of the water. So, in terms of m and rho, you have to get the volume of the bar. Please take a snapshot of this question and give it a try. Of course, uh, the principle of physics that is involved here is pretty straightforward. It is Archimedes principle, isn't it? Try it. Give it a try. Here I am proceeding with my solution. Uh, this is the situation. Uh, this is water. It is a wide water body and this is a long bar. Long bar, the question says the bar is long, which means this dimension length of the bar is quite large compared to side length of the square face. This square face is face of the bar is actually in shape of a square like this. So, if side length of the square face is a, then length of the bar is much, much, much larger than that. Then there is a statement in the question which says that exactly half the volume of the bar is submerged inside water. So, using Archimedes principle, we can straight away write that weight of the bar, which is being balanced by point C force, must be equal to V by 2 rho G. V stands for total volume of the bar. V by 2 is half the volume of the bar which is submerged inside water. This is density of water, this is G. Volume of submerged part of solid, density of liquid into G, this buoyancy force and this has to be equal to weight of the bar. That is one thing. Now, the question says that you put a small weight over here. Weight can be in form of like, assume that a bird comes and alights here, it sits here. Uh, some insect or bird uh, comes and sits over here. So, this bar gets tilted like this. Let me show it in this diagram. This is the small object, size is small, weight may not be small comparable, comparable to, it may be comparable to the mass of the bar, but in size it is just like a particle. So, a small object of mass m, mass of this yellow colored object is given to you, has been placed at one corner and because of this the bar tilts. Now, the question says, that the upper level of the bar at this edge is just at the water surface as you can see on this in this diagram. And then the question says that the lower edge is inside water, it is not outside water. So, the situation looks like this. Actually, the bar is quite thin compared to uh, length, but to keep the diagram clean and to make it understandable, I have made it a bit thick, but we have to keep in mind that this length is very large compared to this side length of the square face. Now, the bar stays in equilibrium in this position. Hmm. So, obviously, buoyancy force right now, buoyancy force right now is equal to weight of this bar as well as 
weight of this small object. But there is something else that you need to figure out to be able to solve this question. If you have understood the question now, give it a pause, try it on your own. Here I am again proceeding with my solution. Uh, how to write buoyancy force in this situation? Obviously, buoyancy force is weight of this volume of water. No doubt about it. Weight of this volume of water. But I will write it in a slightly different way. I will write it like this. First, assume that the complete bar is submerged. Just assume that complete bar is submerged. If the complete bar is submerged, then the buoyancy force will be equal to, I am writing it as Fb0, it will be equal to volume of the entire bar, density of water into G. And this force will definitely act at the center, geometrical center or center of mass of the bar. Bar is uniform, so its geometrical center is its center of mass. That is one thing. If the bar is completely submerged, in this problem it is not submerged, but let us for a moment assume that bar is completely submerged. In that case, the buoyancy force will act at the geometrical center of the bar, that means at the center of mass of the bar and its magnitude will be V rho g, where V is the volume of the bar. Of course, the weight force, weight force means weight of the bar acts at its center of mass, no doubt about it. But the fact of the matter is that the complete bar is not submerged. This part of the bar, this triangular part, this triangular part is outside water. So, actually the buoyancy force in this situation is less than this. By what amount? By what amount? The answer is weight of this much volume of water. What I am saying is, I am first assuming that let us write uh, the buoyancy if the bar is completely submerged. This is the buoyancy. But the fact is bar is not completely submerged. So, this much weight of water which is actually not displaced, I will subtract that from this buoyancy force, right. So, that will give me the total buoyancy. So, what trick am I trying to play? What actually I am doing is, I am finding a bit, uh, I am finding it a bit difficult to write this volume, right. So, I am finding it a bit difficult to write the buoyancy directly. And secondly, even difficult part is, even more difficult part is, where will that buoyancy force be acting? If you somehow write the volume of submerged part into density of water into G, okay, that is buoyancy. But that buoyancy force is definitely not acting at the center of mass of the bar. It is acting at the geometrical center of the submerged part, somewhere here. So, I will need to figure out where is the geometrical center or where is the center of mass of this displaced water, which is often known as center of buoyancy. So, that is actually terrifying. That is, <laughs> I am not getting very sure about that, though it can be done, but I think that it will be tedious. Much simpler way is what I am trying to tell you. First, assume that the complete bar is submerged. Buoyancy is this much. Where will it be acting? It will be acting at the geometrical center of the bar. But the fact is that this much volume of bar is not submerged. So, weight of this much amount of water should be subtracted from this. Or I can say that weight of this much amount of water is another force acting in downward direction. Let me put it like this. Actual buoyancy is this minus delta F. But what I am trying, to, uh, what I am going to do is, I will take, okay, this is one force and there is another force, delta F acting like this. What is this delta F? Delta F is equal to weight of this part of water. So, that is also very difficult to write, isn't it? No, not actually. First thing, this delta F force will be acting at center of mass or geometrical center or centroid of this triangle, whatever you call it. Okay. So, I have written buoyancy as combination of two forces. One is this one and the other one is equal to weight of 
this volume of water which is which must be acting at the centroid of this triangle and under the assumption of the question it is easy to figure out the position of centroid of the triangle because this side length is small this diagram is erroneous actual actual diagram is uh, like this so this side length is really very small this side length is really very small and the tilt angle this angle has to be very small in this case when some part of the bar left face is still inside water and this one has been submerged like this this tilt angle is definitely very small this tilt angle is uh, approximately this length upon this length the question says that this whole a is much 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 less than this l so obviously this tilt angle is very small so i'll assume that this length is l this length as well is l this is more or less like an isosceles triangle it is in fact and height of this isosceles triangle is also roughly l only because this angle is very small it is a uh, isosceles triangle with thin apex angle very small apex angle so this height of the isosceles triangle is l if it is l that is equal to length of the bar then all of you know that this centroid thing this point centroid this will be at a distance of 2l by 3 from this apex point the centroid is at a distance of 2l by 3 and this this line that i am drawing here it is roughly horizontal this tilt angle is really very small okay so i have done enough of convincing now i leave it to you to imagine what i am saying i have said what i wanted to say <laughs> now i will do two things first buoyant force right now is equal to total weight and second uh, torque must also balance i'll balance torque about this point so one torque is because because of this weight mg i can simply write it as l by 2 right this is same as delta f into this length so please this is 2l by 3 this is 2l by 3 2l by 3 minus l by 2 minus l by 2 so this becomes 6 4l minus uh, this is l by 6 basically so delta f into l by 6 so this gives me delta f uh, is equal to actually mg by 3mg in fact delta f is equal to 3mg i don't know how many students are still with me i'm sure not many are there uh, but teachers are definitely there. <laughs> so, uh, thumbs up to all viewers who are still with me and trying to understand my logic. Uh, delta F is equal to 3 mg. What is delta F? Delta F is actually weight of this much volume of water, isn't it? So, now you know delta F which is equal to 3 mg. But the question is asking, what is the volume of this bar? So, let us balance the buoyancy force. What do you think? Uh, this delta F, this delta F is nothing but, this delta F is nothing but, uh, it is volume of this part, isn't it? Into rho into g. That is what delta F represents. But let us uh, take it like this that the buoyancy force is actually the total volume of the bar rho g minus delta f. Yes, this is what the buoyancy force is actually. And this buoyancy force should be equal to weight of the entire bar plus this mg. Okay, let me write it like this. Right. So, I think it was given in the question that initially only half of the bar is submerged so weight of the entire bar weight of the entire bar in place of delta f i am writing 3 mg which we have already derived weight of the entire bar can be written as v by 2 rho g that also i have written earlier so this solves your problem actually 3 by 2 v rho g is equal to 4 mg 
So V is equal to 8 mg, in fact G goes away, 8 m by 3 rho, 8 m by 3 rho. So this solves the problem actually, this is the volume of the bar given in the question. I hope I have not made any mistake. Uh, yes, 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 this is 4 and yes, I have made a mistake, I am so sorry, this is half. So, as usual, I do commit mistakes. Sorry for that. It is only 8 m by rho. This is only V by 2 rho g and this is 4 m g. So, 8 m by rho is the volume of the given bar. Hope those of you who are watching till now <laughs> enjoyed this video. Please write in the comment section. You can do the algebra and mathematics in various different ways actually. So, if you have some other way, please do write in the comment section for the benefit of others. See you all in the next video. Goodbye.